good morning, everyone. Welcome to Winning Mondays. It's another Monday, guys. It's another week to win. Haha. <laughs> okay. So my name is Mariah. Uh, I'm with Keller Williams Malaysia. I'm the training coordinator here. And just want to welcome you all on Zoom. And um, I think we don't have our Facebook Live running today. So if you have anyone looking for the link, please send them the Zoom link so that they can join. That would be great. Okay, so we've been having a lot of great sessions the past few weeks. Today we have a great session too. I'm really, I've been wanting to do this session for like months actually. So today we're going to be talking about open house, which I think is really fun, really exciting, and something that's uh, probably not used enough, you know, uh, by the agents. It's, it's, it's such a great opportunity to market your market the home and like do a lot of other things, which we're going to go into um, today. So, you know, as we get started, I always like to run a quick poll. We have another easy poll today, guys. So, um, all right, let's see. It's a real simple question. Very easy. Have you held an open house for one of your listings in 2023? So whether you, yes or no, have you ever held, yeah, just for this year, did you hold an open house or not? So I'm imagining it won't be a very high yes percentage, but I went just curious on the call today, how many of you have actually held open house this year, right? Because I know, uh, yeah, probably, I think after, like during COVID, right, no one's no one was doing open house, at least not a physical one. So probably it's taking a while for people to get back into it. So just like to get an idea of uh, all the people that are with us today, how much experience they have doing open house and specifically this year. So I'll give you guys another five, 10 seconds. Yeah, I hope you're all, what'd you all do this morning? I actually went swimming this morning. I feel so good. I'm trying to like get back and get fit again. I hope you're all doing good things for yourself to keep yourself healthy and well. Yeah, if you, anyone, does anyone exercise in the morning? Who's exercises in the morning? Can you like, anyone exercise, just type in the chat. I wanna see who else is a morning exercise person. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I'm going to uh, close the chat in five seconds. All right. For that's right now the chat though, the, the poll, I'm going to close the poll. All right. Closing the poll. Here we go. Okay. So I'm sure you're all curious too, who else is doing open house. So we have only 9% of the people have said yes on, on this call right now. So 91% of you have not held an open house in 2023. So you are in the right place. You guys are going to learn about how to do open house, all the best practices, and like you're going to get inspired. I hope that if we do this poll again in like three months or four months, like it will be like instead of 10, 9, 9, 10 percent, it'll be like 30 percent or something. That would be so cool. I hope a lot of you do open house after get inspired after watching this uh, this episode and hearing from our guests. Okay, well, with that, let's bring on our special guest of the day. We have one birthday boy, <laughs> Rosalind Shapri. Come on, come on down. Hi, hi. Happy, happy birthday, Rosalind. I know it's not your birthday today, but yeah. recently. We, we said we would celebrate today, right? So celebrate. Happy <laughs> birthday today. Yes, yes, happy birthday. And we also have Anita Sharma. Anita, come on in. <laughs> hi, good morning. Good morning, good morning. It's not your birthday, right? Next month. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> we can't do this. So good, so good. Okay, so glad you guys could join us. Thank you for just giving your time and your energy to do this. That's really, really helpful. Yeah, okay. So, all right, let's get, I want to get started by just having you guys intro yourselves. Sorry, there's some like noise on the chat. Where is it coming from? Do you guys hear this noise, like a background, background noise? I'm okay here. You don't, you don't hear like a, an echo? No, nope. no one. Okay, maybe it's just me. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, cool. All right. So maybe we start with you, Roslan. Can you share with us uh, just your background? Like, who are you? What's your background in real estate? Um, yeah, like how long you've been in the business? What's your area of focus and all that? Okay, all right. Uh, very good morning to everyone. Thank you so much to Maria for inviting me and uh, Anita today uh, to this wonderful Winning Monday. Uh, first of all, my name is Rosla Shapri. Uh, I've been with, uh, in the industry since 2010 and uh, currently with uh, Redfield uh, Puchong uh, MC3. Uh, it's also currently a probationary uh, estate agent and also a, a committee member for KWCAS. So, uh. Uh, used to be with the airlines before and then since then has been doing this full time uh in the real estate industry uh, since 2010 
Nice, nice, nice. Great. Nice, nice. Thank you. Okay, Anita, how about yourself? Share with us. Um, I've been in this industry for 15 years, uh, coming to 16 years now. I've uh, been with Refill the longest time. Um, so my background was I was a banker before I joined the real estate. And um, so basically, uh, I'm with uh, Market Center Flagship. And um, I'm looking forward to the session. Which I'll be, I'll be, yeah, yeah. What's your focus area? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm focusing in PJ. Currently, okay. just uh, focusing on PJ properties. Yeah, for me, I'm currently staying in Cyberjaya. Uh, ah. Just farming around Sepang, Kota Warisan, and Cyberjaya area. But uh, in the current market situation, basically, uh, more on Klang Valley. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we have one banker, one uh, flight staff, and uh, <laughs> but lots of. I, I, both of you are also in KW Cares, isn't it? And, you know, that's something you guys have in common. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Nice. Okay. So I would love to hear, first of all, how you both got started in open house. I would like to hear this. Maybe, uh, Rosalind, you want to share first? How did you get started with open house? Okay. Uh, the first time I did my open house was uh, way back then in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, mm. So previously, uh, before that, uh, open house was not in my vocab. So it was more mm -hmm. of the normal uh, standard kind of uh, practice where we promote uh, via online uh, portals or those kind of things. Until one day when uh, I used to be uh, with uh, Field Street Kembangan before, before it was uh, closed down. And then used to be a head uh, of sales for that particular branch. And before that, I was handling a lot a group of people, so I've got no time for for other things uh, for myself actually. And then when when I moved to Puchong, uh, Muscat Centre Three, so that this is where when I started to venture uh, explore, uh, into open houses because I see that in Kota Warisan area, especially, uh, there's no one is doing uh, any open houses there. Lah. So that was my first venture, and uh, I did that uh, basically alone at that time, sort of like a trial and error kind of. Uh, adventure, right? Open house, so uh, so that, that's basically how I got into doing an open house. So, what year was that? Like, how long ago was that? It was quite long. When I first started, it was in uh, two thousand seventeen or sixteen. Seventeen. Okay, okay. Like uh, so, less than ten years. A while ago. Okay, cool, cool. Nice. Nice. How about you, Anita? How did what was your first experience like? How did you get started? Yeah, I started with Ripfield uh, being in the Subang branch with MC2, and I was directly under the leadership of Ronnie Fernandez. Mm -hmm. So, Ronnie Fernandez, amazing guy. Uh, so, he taught us so much about what we can do, the potentials that we have. And at that point of time, I think it's hardly about even using social media or anything, you know. So, we never used to market thing, uh, properties the way we do these days. So we were going more on a traditional basis where I use, uh, you know, I mean, you learn something, you want to try it out. And that's when I got started. I think very much uh, in within the two years that I joined the real estate industry, I started doing open house. Huh. And then it used to be so much fun. I mean, now, of course, it's still fun. But at that point of time, I think it was more traditional. You advertise in the Star newspaper. You, you know, you put up a nice photo you pay extra for it color photo and stuff like that and then you you know you advertise over days and then you actually see a good uh, crowd coming actually to the open house and it started from then and i think one thing led to another i you know that the whole idea of coming together putting up setting up the house getting things done seeing people seeing the value of you know, when people come where they're just not merely coming to see this property, right. they tend to become your clients. You tend to get leads and stuff like that. Right. So it just went on over the years. Yeah. Then it slowed down after COVID, lah, but it's picking okay. up again. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Would you say that that in the earlier days, there was more open house compared to today? or uh, For myself, yes, I did a lot. Uh, I did like every other month, if possible. Mm -hmm. In the past... Um, it was even once, uh, you know, our reception, uh, Shanti used to say, Anita, you might as well keep all the banners because you are the only one who come and takes the banners from the <laughs> office. So, yeah, I did quite a bit in the past, yeah. Okay, so we got the right people on the call. Okay, very good. The people who are actually doing the open house are very good. <laughs> okay, I want to, uh, let's 
for those who are not familiar and not so experienced with open house, maybe I ask Roseline, what would you say are the benefits uh, so the key goal or objective of you know doing an open house what's the purpose of even doing an open house yeah um, main purpose of an open house is that basically uh, one is the first one is to sell the house uh, the listing that you have okay. uh, attract, attract buyers to it and uh, secondly it's more on lead generation this is one part of how you lead generate uh for your business you know okay. other than the normal uh the other method of early generation you know cold calling all those kind of things open house is another great way of how to to lead generate um one of the good thing or the best thing about this is that it's being done face to face and it, it's a fun and a, a low cost kind of uh, method to do you know mm-hmm. for you to, to uh, compile or to gain your leads in this lah. Okay, cool. So to sell, basically two things that you mentioned, like one is like the, to sell the house and the number two is to lead generate. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. I like that. And also it's basically uh, uh, one of the methods where you can train yourself on how to actually face uh, your clients, you know, to, to hmm. brush your skills, uh, communication skills, uh, rather than, you know, via WhatsApp, like what most are doing right now. So open house is another part of how you can train and uh, on your skills uh, in uh, handling or communicating with your clients, your customers, or basically uh, to be short on this is like how you maintain your human touch with uh, with a client, uh, with another person. Okay. Right. Okay. So like the interactions, the, it gives that opportunity for more more experience, more practice, more connection. Yes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So who else, like, uh, okay, so you mentioned like you as an agent, you would benefit by maybe selling the house, making more leads, having, you know, improving your skills. What other benefits are there that you see, Roslan, that from your experience? Your your exposure or uh, in that particular area, basically. Okay. Uh, let's see, if you are the only one who's uh, doing an open house at this particular, for example, we take a... Uh, 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 Kota Warisan, for example, Sepang. So if you are the only agent that's doing uh, an open house in that particular area, mm-hmm. so basically you'll be uh, creating uh, an, uh, an exposure for yourself or an awareness that you are active or you are being sort, sort of like a so-called specialist within that area and people right. will start to know, uh, to notice uh, your presence in that particular area. Wow, very cool, very cool. How about you, Anita? Like, what other benefits do you see in uh, in doing open house? Maybe not for even for yourself, but like, uh, who else benefits from this open house? Would you say? Yeah, actually, the answers uh, Roslan has shared everything uh, with that. <laughs> so, but basically, uh, yeah, what what I can say is actually from the open house. Basically, you are getting you are adding value to the clients you see because most of the properties mm-hmm. when we do open house it is also we are taking it on an exclusive basis you know so we want to add value we want our owners to also see that we are just not selling their properties that just the normal way where we just advertise and bring buyers we are actually taking time several hours over several weekends actually putting up the time setting up and and they get excited actually the owners do get okay. excited and I mean, of course, if the owners have used many other agents in the past, they will see that actually, hey, this agent is different. You know, they are doing different things, you know, and that is where I feel it's added value to our service as well. Um, but as far as everything else, I think, Rosalind, I'll be repeating exactly what he said, you know. That- oh, but you, you brought up a huge point. You said it's a value to the owner. Yeah. So that's a, yeah. that's a huge benefit yeah. to the owner, right, yeah. that they are so, getting... Because yeah. that's so important when I think when the owner sees value in us, automatically they're going to recommend us to their friends and families. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, 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 right. That's very cool. I think it must impact the whole neighborhood to an extent, right? Like just thinking, I can, when you, Rosan, you mentioned like people in the area will, will see what's happening and uh, will see that you're the agent of the area and all that. Correct. That's where your marketing strategy is on open house we play a very important role uh, during the uh, when you conduct the open house uh, because it will be sort right. of a very uh, prominent uh, unit in that particular area with all your banners with all your you know uh, striking banners in that uh, that during that open house uh, that session for that day or or to this on the weekend that day so it's basically it adds on to to what's happening in the particular area uh, neighborhood and then also then you get to meet 
basically all the neighbors uh, from that uh, uh, within that 10 unit radius, uh, 20 unit radius, or even uh, during the uh, for the whole particular area. Right, right. So I'm just thinking as a lead generation in that sense, it seems like, uh, I mean, such a good opportunity, like I would never, another way of prospecting and marketing and, and that yeah. is quite efficient, actually, to, to yeah. very yeah. direct. Yeah. yeah. You know, the main main objective is to get buyers for the house. But at, at the same time, you are basically killing a few birds with one stone, actually, not only two birds. So basically, uh, you're first, well, you're uh, working to sell the property, uh, the listing in hand. Mm -hmm. Second, you probably be getting leads on uh, buyer leads, uh, potential or genuine buyer leads uh, to that particular unit. Right. Uh, so you also get leads uh, from sellers from that particular area as well. So when right. you talk about uh, buyer, uh, genuine buyer leads, this is a these are people where you, it he or she may not be uh, able to buy the property that you're doing the open house on probably. Okay. The price range. Uh, the, but let's say the open house you're joining the price range is at eight hundred thousand listed, but the buyers who came and have a look uh, came to look at the house to, to view the house. Probably their their market range is within the five hundred thousand, and I'm sure that in your listing you have five hundred thousand properties, whether it's mm -hmm. with the same area or other areas which you can propose. And for seller uh, seller leads, basically, uh, neighbors will come and have a look, uh, view the place. They will ask. They want to know, uh, what's happening actually? What's the value? Yeah house or, or that we are being uh, uh, put on sale and also they also know they are, like to know their own uh, value of their own property and they may have plans to sell as well so basically indirectly you'll get leads uh, on sellers as well then those are the, the three main uh, 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 potential leads that you can get but the most that will benefit most on an open house is you yourself as the agent <laughs> everything, everything. Yeah, sounds good. Can I ask actually, uh, in terms of lead generation, we always talk about like the cost, right? So how much would you say this, this kind of thing costs? Maybe both of you can just weigh in on what's the cost of running an open house for you? It yeah. Depends, it depends on, uh, it depends on, on what type of house, a property that you're doing the open house on. Okay. And also it involves, uh, uh, goes back to your marketing strategies because in an open house, in, in order for you to attract potential leads to so an open house, uh, normally it requires a combination of online and offline marketing strategies, you see. Okay. For example, uh, effective uh, techniques that you do, for example, on online marketing, you have your social media promotion, your email marketing, real estate websites, um, probably virtual tours. So those who you invited but cannot come probably due to the distance, you can do a virtual tour for them during the open house. And then uh, online uh, communities, for example, in uh, social media, so you have online communities for that particular area. You can invite uh, uh, community groups, forums, or those kind of things. And when you talk about traditional marketing, uh, this is where you can place ads in local newspapers, magazines, and or community newsletters. And then uh, don't forget your signage, you know, your open house signage where you put up uh, uh, buntings or banners uh, uh, at the, at the uh, area, at that unit that you are doing the open house. And also the networking where you leverage on your network, including your, your fellow rents from even other agencies as well. And also your, your families and uh, like that. So all this, basically as a rent, you basically have already have this in hand, your social media, your on, uh, offline marketing and all those kind of things. Right. And uh, you, you just leverage on using that uh, in order for you, where normally the focus is on your probably your uh, uh, number of listings that you have, but this one, this is where you focus only one one particular unit which you are focusing on the open house. Uh, right, right. So, and it also comes with engagement strategies where you can have uh, refreshments and interactive elements, for example, refreshments. So this is where most of the time the cost uh, will come in, and also like I say, it depends on on the type of property that you are doing uh, open houses uh, uh, in terms of what you can provide. So open house is not a high cost kind of uh, event, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but it's a very time consuming uh, uh, event where you have to spend okay. a lot of your time on that because when you do an open house, it doesn't mean that tomorrow you plan to have an open house. Today only you decide that you plan <laughs> and put up an open house. But you have to basically prepare a week or two, minimum one week from the date of the open house. So mm -hmm. when you ask me about the cost, it's a very low cost kind of, of uh, event. Mm -hmm. uh, strategy 
that you can do, but a very high re uh, return of investment in terms of your leads and also in terms of if you sell the house, you know. Uh, right. Thank you. That's really helpful. How about Anita? What's what's your take on the cost yeah. of an order? So uh, to add on to what uh, Roslan has done, because uh, basically, yes, we use all tools that we can get to reach out to people. Uh, we we sent out a lot of uh, flyers. We, we reach out to all our database. We use the social media, you know, offline, online kind of method. But the, just to share, like uh, three months ago when we did uh, one open house and we were doing open house on two properties and they're just like five minutes away from each other. So me and my team, we decided to, um, you know, why not we spend some money to actually get leads as well. So we went uh, on uh, getting flyers distributed. So we got, okay. we engaged with someone to print out the flyers and got it distributed. And we were pleasantly surprised that we did have people coming from the flyers. Mm -hmm. I like so, that. I mean, of course, that is something that you pay a little bit more than the, you know, the other times that I've done. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it is, there's no right and wrong. At the end of the day, if you have a budget, you want to spend the budget to reach out to a bigger, you know, group of people. Also, with the purpose that maybe someone who received this flyer and quite happy with what they see will want to engage us to sell their properties and probably think mm. that we're going to use the same method on their properties as well. Right, yeah. right. So yeah, as far as cost, yeah, we do not, uh, usually I do not spend very big figures on open house because it's all actually like you got your buntings already. Yeah, of course, buntings do get, uh, you know, removed by the Bandaraya people. Many times, <laughs> like, I go one day earlier and fit and then it all gets removed. So we must have extra to go and get it fixed again, okay. you know? Okay. Yeah, so I try to also use uh, properties that are very close to busy streets and stuff like that because generally with the banners on the main roads and all that it may lead a high volume of traffic to the house so and it's also about picking and choosing what you want to work on for the open house yeah so it is a very yeah. cost wise we do not spend all that big amount then of course refreshments and all that also we see oh. we, we sort of you know gauge what what kind of people will come will they really want to eat so much in the timing of the open house because you see like sometimes when you see look you look at what developers are doing when they are launching a new property you know they do like a sati party kind of mm. thing you know when they invite people uh, walk in or invite their database kind of thing but those are developers they have to budget for that you know mm. but for us it's a totally different uh, scenario where you have to look at the type of like i said earlier like type of property that you do and then even that even let's say for example you have like 50 listings or 20 or 30 listings in hand doesn't mean that you have to do open house for all the listings ah uh, right 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 filter out and limit down to the most viable viable unit that that needs to have an open house for example uh, the units that you've uh, been in hand for quite some time and you cannot uh, get uh, people to buy you know and then uh, units which are not really in the high traffic area mm. uh, uh, we need okay. to come and have, have a look at that place and to actually know where the place is and then also uh, units that you don't need to do an open house on that for example you know that you can sell it on its own you know because it's in a hot hot area a hot property kind of thing so no point of doing an open house but it's not wrong to do an open house there because then your motive or your objective of doing that open house is different it's not to sell the house but to gain leads and wow. uh, you no know, it's a hot area so there will be a lot of buyers there will be a lot of sellers there so you are basically leveraging on that particular listing or particular right. unit in order for you to expose yourself in that particular area right I'm, I'm suddenly imagining like if you have that hot property that you know is easy to sell and then you do an open house it will make even more like a frenzy of excitement like a lot of people will probably come and you will get a lot of connection a lot of leads yeah it's pretty, it's pretty cool more on for you yourself actually more right on you you to expose right. yourself uh, as the uh, agent uh, in that particular area to let everybody know that you are here uh, to to assist and you are here to offer your services to whether buyers or sellers in that particular area. Right. If it's a hot area, you need the, as many listings as you can in that particular uh, farming area of yours.
Okay, so before we go into the details of the how and all that, I want let's hear some like testimonies. Okay, I would love to hear from you some stories. Get everyone excited. Uh, yeah, do you have any memorable stories of where you know an open house event ended up being quite a good lead gen opportunity or you know something exciting happened? Yeah, maybe uh, Anita, you want to share first what what any story you have? <laughs> yeah. Okay, this was a few years ago. Uh, I had this lovely house to sell in Gassing Inda, uh, a two and a half story property. And uh, what was really nice uh, was the house itself was so beautiful. You know, it's like, um, like it is like out of a catalog kind of house. So basically, uh, and the owner, they were staying there at that time. So they were really nice, very young family. And I gave them a lot of options. They gave me on an exclusive basis. I did a lot of, you know, of course, because the house being in the quality it's in and you know how beautiful it is. Of course, the price was a little bit higher than the other houses in the neighborhood. So what we did was um, we tried to look at ways how we can actually get the right buyers to this house. And eventually, actually, uh, I worked on the house almost eight months, seven to eight months, which was pretty long for a terrace house. And I mean, then we came down to, you know, trying to do different things. And then I brought up the idea of doing open house. But I say, usually I do not really ask owners who are actually staying there, whether I can actually do open house on your property, unless it's an empty house. But I thought, never mind, let's just give it a try. And we were actually surprised because the turnout was really good. And the owners were really nice. They say, okay, you need my house. How many hours do you need? We will leave the house. So the house, but I said, please keep all your valuables with you. Don't leave them lying around the house because yeah. that's a concern. And it was really good because I think I did it over two or three weekends. And because the house was so nice, I had like really nice food, some light bites, okay. drinks okay. and all that. So you like, you can really um, plate them well and stuff. And um, what was surprising is maybe just about a couple of weeks to three weeks later, I sold the house. And it was someone from the neighborhood who actually mm -hmm. found out about the open house, but didn't come for the open house because they were busy that weekend. But eventually they came and visited the house after that and they purchased it. And they were in the same location. I mean, they're staying in the same area for like the last eight months. They didn't even know the house was for sale. Even wow. though I did so much of marketing, but I'm surprised they never found out until I did the open house. Wow. So wow. That, that was... a uh, quite a good experience actually okay okay and did you get any lead generation like opportunities as well yeah a what, lot a lot you know, tell us uh, yeah more. so i mean basically again because being in that location and uh you know and it's a good location so there are a lot of people from the neighborhood actually came to see the house uh, right. a lot of them was just curious maybe they are not even buyers but eventually they uh, kept in touch with me and even up to now it's that open house was a few years ago until now we are still in touch and I've also sold their houses elsewhere wow. so so basically I got a business from them yeah right so it ended up your open house turned into a sale and it turned into more listings yes that's right that's yeah. amazing. That's like, who doesn't, who doesn't want to try this? Who doesn't want to get a sale and many listings? Ah, okay. <laughs> now you know what to do. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. How about Roslan? Do you have any inspiring stories for us? Yeah, because when I, when I did the open house last time long ago, you know, it was sort of like to fill my bucket list in real estate industry, you know? So because I've been doing like all those uh, online, online property adverts, you know, newspaper ads, and then uh, cold callings, those kind of things. So I think that one of the bucket lists that I need to fill is uh, is doing an open house. So at that time, what I did was uh, uh, was uh, an open house in Kota Warisan, and then I chose three houses uh, to do, uh, three types of properties that I do, uh, a terrace house, a bungalow, and also a landed uh, bungalow as well. Uh. So I want to say like Charles asked, do you feel challenging when doing it alone? Okay, that was one of my first mistakes that I did in um, uh, when I did that open house because I did not expect the turnout to be good and then I did not expect that it's going to be quite a successful kind of uh, event because it was like more on like uh, unprepared kind of thing, you know, uh, doing that open house. So, uh, but the good thing is that I saw all the open house, uh, the, the listings that I did that open house. Even the first one that I did in Kota Warisan, oh. I like what uh, Anita said. A neighbor bought the house, you know. Uh, the, oh, the... same. Okay. 
So when they they saw that uh, I was uh, uh, doing the open house that time, so they came um, and then uh, they came and have a look. But that was when I was about to close that 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 session for that deal. So one of the mistake that I did was I did it a bit too long during that time, which is from ten to five alone, and then uh, it got very tiring for me. And and then uh, when I was about to close at five o'clock, one of the neighbors, uh, which is a few units away, came and said they want to have a look, and they and they immediately book uh, that particular unit. So I sold that one. And then wow. the other one that Great. I did was, was in Ipo. You know, one of the units. Oh, in okay. Because I was, uh, I went down to Ipo to clear the house, uh, from all the uh, the the furniture and everything. So I thought like I could also since you know since I'm be going down doing that. So I did an open house for that, and we managed uh to to close uh the deal for that particular house lah. So my advice on this is that if you are planning to do an open house, don't do it alone, you know, and don't do it too long. You know, just create like uh, uh for example, uh two uh, from two to three or two to five kind of, uh session because okay. this is basically uh when when you do a a long uh ten to five uh kind of open house, especially when you're doing it alone, you will not have time. Now uh, you, you will not create that sense of urgency for the clients who come and view because they can. They know that they can come anytime between ten to five. But the issue, the problem that is that you cannot go anywhere during that ten to five. Right. So when you set your time within that two to five, for example, you know that you will be there, and then you will be creating a sense of urgency for your customers or clients right. that you invited, and also even those walking clients. So those are the things uh, that you need to do, and always have at least at least another partner to do it with you, someone that you can trust, right. you know, some even your colleague uh, from your same uh, agency, uh, things like that. Uh, to do the open house so that you have you can take time for your you know you right. can have uh, in between yeah. right so can, so by can, oh go ahead can, yeah sorry so Roslan you mentioned ten to five you brought me uh, brought back a memory but not a very good one so I just want to quickly share that so it was a ten to five I did in Titi Wangsa for a bungalow uh, it was a very challenging house but the the story here is 10 to 5, I was there uh, with one person to help me. Sharmila was there. And we only had, we had to grand total of zero visitors. Yes. So I totally also, understand that. Uh, all those who, who basically venture into open house, they will face one day where there's no one came to your, your open house. Oh, man. Okay, <laughs> reality, right? <laughs> open house again. But you have to understand, it all depends on how you plan for that particular day. Okay house you know you're wrong plan planning uh of it okay. and then everything will go down south you know everything will go wrong so good on that note let's talk about the uh like like yeah how do you market an open house well so that you don't end up with you're there for how many hours and nobody shows up <laughs> maybe um i need a like do you want to share with us i know you would send me some pictures i would love if you could share how you promote what strategies technique you know um yeah, and what your social media looks like. Uh, maybe I can share the, what you sent me. Hold on. Make sure I get the right one. Okay. All right. This is, you can see the slide. Okay, yeah. All right. So this is some of your, your uh, things you put online before, is it? Yeah, yeah. This, uh, these are some that I prepared. Uh, so basically, uh, maybe you can go to the next one. There was okay. another one here. This one. This one is in the past also. Okay. Uh, something like this is what we did in the brochure. We did uh, flyers, like we really distributed like nearly uh, 15,000 flyers or something around uh, all over PJ. So okay. the response was pretty good. And then I will share with you the next one. Maybe you can show the next one. That's no another one. Oh, this is the same one, right? This is yeah. the sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. one on. This so one, wait, wait. So just to clarify, this one, this is the back. This is part of the same yeah. one. That's okay. right. So okay. this is what you sent out to the whole neighborhood. So it is no, not. It, it's more than just the neighborhood. Is the whole almost a part of PJ here. Okay, so it's showing open house, but it's also showing everything about you and all the other listings you have. It's quite. Yeah. I, th yeah. I think people would like to see this to get an idea of 
when you're advertising for open house, you can do, you can kind of like make it even more than just about open house. It's quite Yeah, because the mainly the focus is to sell the house that we are, you know, doing the open house. Right. So that's, that's but we must, yeah. So we base, but basically it is also a way to share with our buyers what else we have. And even more so if like when they come and view and all that and they're not maybe very happy with the house that they're seeing and they want to explore more, that's when we share about other properties as well. So it's like, it's, it's also like one stop trying to sell whatever else you have, you know, yeah. so trying to get actually all your listings, you know, on print that they come, they can take that flyer and go back also, you right. know, with all your listings on there. So right. if you share the next one, maybe I can okay. just explain. Yeah. So like giving example, this, like we're going to have this open house this coming weekend. Okay. So it's on the 14th and 15th of October. So basically here, I'm using two different timings because it's a little bit hard oh. to say because lately I have been doing open house like more towards morning. We have been doing more towards afternoon, but it's a little bit hard to, to see when actually people come. So this open house, I'm doing one towards 11 to 2 and the next day is 2 to 5. Nice. So I have Max helping me out. We are in this together and okay. we are going to just try both timings over the weekend. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like I like what Roseline was saying earlier about uh doing it for less time so that the urgency, so that the the people who visit will see the other people and they will feel like, wow, this place is very popular, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Is there another page? Oh no, sorry, sorry. Okay. Great, great, great. Um, yeah. Roseline, do you want to share with us what 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 strategies and things you use for uh yeah. for advertising? mentioned just now earlier the strategy is that it is based on online and marketing and nowadays most of uh, the percentage are higher more on on online marketing strategies lah. and then okay uh, okay that is uh, uh, the prelude before the day of the open house itself where you need to create that uh the excitement of you know that that uh how to attract people to come to your uh, open house lah. That right. is when you do things, when you are creating uh, those uh, the uh, invitations for those who are not in your contact list. At the same right. time, you're doing invitations uh, to your database or to your contact list who are potential buyers for that particular area, things like that. And then also uh, social media promotion. You have to do social media promotion, for example, mm -hmm. because nowadays most of, especially those uh, uh, to to have that targeted ads uh, to reach specific demographics uh, who is interested in real estate, especially those, uh, the young and tech savvy uh, in, in the current market right now. Right, so right. Ensure that yeah. they that. Do, you want, do you want to share what you have uh, shared, the, the posters and all that that you share with me? Yeah. So as you can see the pictures here, there are three types of properties that I did open house. The, the okay. first, uh, the far left is the one in Koto Warren. So this was my first open house. Okay. Cool, yeah. cool. This is the one where you were by yourself the whole day, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> things are a thing, you know. And then the, the second one, this is uh, the one in Ipoh. You know, like I said, it's a low-cost uh, event because you are basically recycling all your banners again and give it all uh, the listings that you have. And then I the third one is basically a developer unit. This is basically uh, to gain leads on buyers from that area. So all these uh, units are uh, sold uh, during the open house. And for the developer unit, basically we get leads and also we, I get to sell one or two units uh, of the developer units uh, by using or leveraging their, their own uh, show unit that they have. But so you have to get prior, prior uh, approval from them. Lah. Right. And then uh, in terms of uh, marketing or in terms of engaging people, you, you are currently now you can use uh, social media platforms like YouTube, uh, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, you know, Twitter, right. Facebook, and then you create videos, uh, sort of like a teaser, teaser videos, uh, teaser videos uh, on a particular property that you're doing. So people who come and have a look at the video, when they agree to come, you basically have uh, about 70% interest in them already because they already seen the video beforehand you know right. and uh and then how to invite invitation that you'll create events like this one uh, yeah you get create during uh in in facebook or in instagram or things like that right right i like it's this yeah to capture the mass market uh in that particular state or particular district uh but at the same time like what i said you can also print out 
uh, flyers for that particular uh, unit, uh, sorry, particular neighborhood. You know, for example, you print out 5,000 to 10,000 flyers. So with two weeks before that, uh, before the open house, probably you have to do it twice, you know, on flyer distribution. The first week you do it once, uh, flyer distribution 5,000 or 10,000 uh, mm -hmm. pieces. And then one week prior to the open house, you do another, another one because this is to create that that uh, and to make sure that the those receiving the flies will remember that there will be an open house. Uh, right, I see, I see. You need to follow up and re repeat, repeat and repeat. <laughs> correct, correct. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, just okay. from one experience as well, uh, one of the open houses in the past, we can also actually invite uh, bankers to actually be present there and then maybe in our advertisement we can actually uh, say that you can even come and get your valuation of the house check and stuff but it's like basically trying to encourage people to come maybe to even find out what is their property value is like you know? right. so so you know people who wants to find out more on their eligibility and all that so we add value mm -hmm. i know that there were uh, another friend of mine who did and she even got the lawyers to be present maybe just one lawyer one banker to be very present cool as well yeah and then it could be a win-win for them because the lawyer also get a chance to like make connection and, and yes, lead generate right. the so-called yeah. but you see when you see developers doing a launch for their properties and uh, their, their new launch do you see they invite during the sati party they invite like those uh I see full experts, see full properties uh, to give talks on that. And then they invite bankers, you know, they invite even uh, lawyers as well. So what we can do is that we can copy that, but on a smaller scale, you know, you, right, you right. mortgage bankers that, that work with you, uh, that have, have been working with you and you know that are very reliable and then there's uh, uh, lawyers that are reliable and then has been working and understand how we uh, to work with each other. And also, like for example, like what uh, Charles uh, mentioned, Feng Shui Consult consultation yes but that is going to give a uh, quite a, a high cost for your for your event on that day you know <laughs> and also it could backfire you know if <laughs> feng shui <unit> consult <laughs> that open house is uh, not according to what feng shui uh, i think i think i think charles want to be the consultant you invite him he can dress up and like <laughs> but, but i but, feel that maybe yeah. food is always an attraction uh, sometimes when somebody advertise right. so you know there'll be something is you know like if somebody say got satay party and all that or durian party or whatever sometimes people come but then the purpose will again be like they probably just came because they just came satay. to eat yeah. <laughs> yeah i remember rosaline mentioning to me one time also the same problem <laughs> because they end up because you are not the developer with budget for that you know that was right. they, okay they're okay they're okay to spend so, you so need to... for our own individual open house at least you have uh, cold mineral water or at least canned drinks, you know, just to give your clients, you know, like that, and just to, to have something. You don't have to have food there. Well, probably if you want, you can have a small a snacks so or sandwiches, kind of, but uh -huh. it depends also on the type of property that you are doing. If the property is, let's say, for example, a million dollar property, a three million, five million dollar property, you can probably spend a bit on it because the, 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 the portfolio of the client that will come is going to be a different portfolio. If you're doing a property which is 300,000, mm -hmm. probably a different portfolio, different criteria of, of uh, clients that come. So it depends on on how you do. Like how about uh, Joanne asks, how do you collect leads information? This is normally either you put a book, uh, a guest book, and ask them to sign uh, and fill up their form. Okay. Fill up their form, fill up their details there, uh, email and also uh, name, email and also number, uh, phone number. Or you can do a QR code, which mm -hmm. is... The millennials will do be doing the QR code, but the baby boomers will not be doing the QR code. So probably you can have both. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just to share that uh, in the last few rounds, I, what I do is I on the spot, I will tell them because sometimes some of them might register and some numbers may not even be reachable. So I don't know. But what I do is usually I say, hey, I have something, I can send you some details on this property or some other properties. Can I have your number? And I straight away type it on my phone. I give them a missed call. Then they, you know, then I follow up from there. Clever. So that's, that's just another way. Yeah. I like that. And I see in the chat, uh, William says, we can ask the banker to sponsor the snacks. <laughs> that's a good idea. So <laughs> maybe he has more budget. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to ask about best practices, but I think we've already covered like quite a few. You mentioned about the timing, just make it like two to three hours, you know, on the weekends. And then uh, 
you know, need to prepare with the marketing well beforehand and all that, inviting your 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 all the database and inviting the neighborhood. I like that. Yeah. How about um, yeah, any other best practices, you know, you can think of that you want to share with everyone if, if they want to run an open house? What, what do you recommend, like, uh, in terms of, like, what research you need to do beforehand or any, any tips about this? The most important thing when you want to do an open house, whether you're doing it with a partner, just two of you, or whether you're doing it in team, always remember that you are doing this. You must have fun in doing this. You know, don't okay. stress out just you know that you're doing an open house you stress out for the past two weeks you know just to to do, do the open because on the day itself you show right through you that you're stressed out on this and that will not be a plus point for you so <laughs> just do and just have fun in doing what you do uh, especially when and organizing open house. you just basically like planning a party kind of thing lah, you know but with an uh, a hidden agenda of selling and also getting leads uh, for that lah. i like that so you need to prepare yourself by getting into like the party mode <laughs> Uh, don't get too stressed out you know this is my first uh, open house i'm gonna be stressed out i'm gonna you know die standing kind of thing <laughs> it, it's not gonna die and it, it's just an open house it's just, yeah. just a uh, bucket list that probably you can do uh in order to do uh to create leads uh in your in, in your business life. nice any any additional thoughts about like how to welcome the guests how to interact with the guests who come i like i need to mention about get their phone number and you know make the connection right away but um other thoughts you have maybe roseland or there, there, there's a few ways on you know uh, my exposure to to the service industry in the airlines people taught me a lot of things uh when talk with uh, with, uh when it comes to uh, human human to human interaction lah. so when you do an open house you know the first thing that you need to do is always have a smile on your face you know welcome them warmly you know greet visitors uh yes greet uh, <laughs> properly and then uh, when they are in ask open-ended questions you know don't ask okay. with an uh, which they can answer with simple yes or no because that's uh, that's going to defeat the purpose and then uh, uh, thirdly like you you basically have to listen actively to what they want because this is the first when the first time you met them the meet them this is the first impression and from there you can basically gauge what they really need uh, when when they come to the open house so it could be that particular unit that you're doing uh, selling during the open house or they could be looking for something which is a lower price or could be a higher price you never know and then um, some other things that you need to do in order to, uh, to greet is like you need to provide information to them you know uh, about the property about the neighborhood and then uh, share your knowledge while sharing your knowledge you'll show that you are well versed with that particular unit you know what's going on you know anywhere that there's any encumbrances or not and also the particular area uh, in that lab. because all those that you do from this the, the the time they step into the house this is basically to create a connection to find a common ground uh, in order for you to do connection with the visitors you know because this is very important it's either the first impression is going to either you make it or you break it and then uh, you can also uh, you know, offer them uh, drinks uh, or food if you have snacks and then uh, encourage uh, exploration as well because you must allow your visitors to explore the property because this is an open house so you have to have that mind that 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 concept that they come to have a look and to explore the house you know? okay please like like i always mention during the trainings uh, in ignite yeah uh, when as a client, a customer that comes to open house, do not state the obvious. You know, for example, you walk them through the living room and you tell them this is the living room, and then you go to the kitchen. This is the kitchen, and then go to the master bedroom. This is the master bedroom. Everybody knows that without you telling. <laughs> so, create something else, which is, for example, when you walk, walk into a living room, you tell them this is basically the the, the place where you you where you bond with your children, with your wife. You know, and this uh, goes to the kitchen. This is where your wife is going to be the, the 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 main event of the house where they'll cook uh, pro uh, proper beautiful food for you and your family and talk about the living room upstairs this is where you can have your own time and also if you have extra room you know tell them the, to a man this is your man cave you can have your uh, man cave <laughs> or your, your studio or whatever gaming areas so create that kind of uh, uh, interest in them rather than st stating the obvious. This is the grass. This is a pintu. This is a door. This is a kind of things <laughs> So and then also uh, some other things that you can put, like what Anita said just now. When you collect their name and number, share educational materials. For example, oh. the transactional uh, transaction data of that place. You have data labs. Mm -hmm. So use that 
you know that particular place so everybody will know that they they are have something uh, uh that you have something in value to offer them so they wow. will you thank you uh, you know uh, emails which is not even uh, that doesn't exist or number phone so something that they look forward to but make sure that you you hold on to your words lah that's a lot that's a great that thank you yes. thank you so much anita do you have something to add any yeah. other maybe i mean for me what i will do also is um i love i love to add music so i love to play music during the open house you know just to make them feel a little bit more comfortable yeah and, and yeah and i also encourage like if let's say someone is doing let's say we in this industry we are doing open house i would encourage uh, our colleagues to actually come and support because sometimes having people around it helps because when buyers come they probably think these are the other buyers or you know they feel some activity other than otherwise the house will look very quiet very you know dull you know so i feel like sometimes having a few people around does help i don't know that's my my take okay. yeah yeah i think so and in in that particular unit you know you have your air conditioning on you mm-hmm. like the lights are on right 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 if you have some music you know uh, probably the, uh, uh, you know you have electricity in the house lah but <laughs> normally if you don't have electricity that it won't be in your lease of an open house as well lah right not quite that's the same atmosphere it must be presentable if you if it's not really presentable then you do it yourself you ask the owners to help you either they they come and clean it up or no cut the uh, the, the grass in the lawn mm-hmm. i think or if they say they just do it as it is do it yourself you know give them an, uh, a value added service to the to the sellers you know to the owners you know by uh, getting someone your gardeners to cut the the grass or no get your cleaners to come so it will be a very presentable kind of things because right. here in Malaysia we are not like the one the, in the west where they spend a lot of money to stage the property mm. you know they have uh, they have cocktail parties they have you know staging of property they rent uh, furniture uh, to come uh, and put up so that the house will look as if it's fully finished kind of thing here owners won't, won't probably won't spend 30 20000 just to 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 rent something and then i'm sure that you if you you uh, the one who spend kind of that money it will probably will uh, cost your commission on that particular listing as well so you make use of what you have and as long as the house is presentable no there's no clear uh, defects or if there's defects like leaking or things like that try to get the owners to repair uh, on right. the same so right. the do is that to create a very good environment or ambiance for example music is a very uh, uh, a good touch to it but provided that you chose the right music lah not grunge <laughs> right that's true also yeah uh, like but so no if you like heavy metal if you like no but please it, it's not for you it's for your uh, people that right, right. Uh, great up. great i like in the chat someone also mentioned you can brew coffee you can make the, the smell also will be quite important as well Okay, I want to ask Anita, how what's how do you do follow up after an open house? So you got all these contacts and everything. What yeah. what do you what's your what do you normally do? Um actually even while I'm there while waiting for the next person to come and all that, I will usually send them a text to say thank you, you know, for dropping in and stuff like that. Then I will follow up with other because you know basically during the conversation I would already find out that what exactly they are looking for. So I may have something else that I want to share with them, you know, so I'll just go to the next level by sharing those information but if that if that house is not suitable the house that they visited if they uh, very clearly say that this doesn't look suitable for us but we are looking at something else so usually then I'll just touch base then give it a day or so then probably check again and then see if they're interested to take a look at the other properties you know mm-hmm. so yeah the follow up has to be really soon because it is still very uh, warm in that sense so before it becomes like too many days have gone by then usually they might even lose interest and just move on to something else Yeah. Right. yeah so yeah we try we try to keep it going like within the day or the next day on itself we nice we do the follow up yeah create like a fall establish a, a systematic follow up process after each open house you know every time you do open house you create something a systematic uh, follow up process you know send personalized uh, follow up emails or messages expressing uh, gratitude for them for the attendance and then also offering additional uh, information to the clients that came that registered you know because this is by uh, because you are basically providing value on this you know be a valuable 
a resource for your potential buyers, not just another another agent in the market, you know, because currently we have like about almost 70,000 registered rents. So in order for you to provide value, this is one of the ways where you do on your in terms of your follow up, you know, you must be a valuable resource for your potential buyers, not just another agent, you know, and then your your professional appearance also is also one of the important thing during uh, Open and also uh, in terms of after follow up, the way you speak, the way you communicate, the kind of thing that will de determine the client's uh, perception of you as uh, the, whether you are an agent that can be trusted or you're just another uh, uh, agent uh, in the market. And then one, of, I think one of the most important thing that you can do is that you can also do a feedback analysis for them, you know. Uh, you give them uh, the, the data transacted during that the, during that uh, uh, for that particular proper, uh, area, and then also offered and then give them a check on the loan eligibility kind of thing, and then what are the things that needed to be done uh, if they they uh, uh, decided to pursue and uh, purchase a house, you know, with the legal legal matters, loan matters, all this kind of thing. So basically, open house is just a, 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 a something to open doors for you in order for you to establish yourself as the one stop. Uh, center for your clients or your potential clients that that, that be beneficial to you or to nice. clients as well. Nice. There's a really great question in the chat. Um, is open house appropriate for condos? Can it be done in a condo? I'd love to hear both your perspective on this. I think Anita, have you done that before? No, um, right. Many many years ago, but it okay. was not so straightforward. Um, so, but because I don't do so, so many condos, so most of my open house is for landed property. Right. Yeah, but I did once, but it was a little bit of hassle because the security and all that. So that becomes like, any, you know, any, like, little, any little tips for those who want to try? Uh, just uh, well, there's no harm. I guess you will need to get permission. The owner will need, probably need to get permission from the management. <laughs> That they are going to have this at particular time, but I don't think you can really have it for such long hours. Maybe having it shorter hour that like just for one hour, but I think then you just have to push it out via social media or whichever way to promote it, and and then you see because whoever comes will still have to register, but at least that timing you have a short time to attend to those people. So I I I wouldn't have so much of experience for condos, but probably just one in the past right. yeah yeah for for condos or for high rise or those with security uh, uh, appropriate or not is very subjective actually mm -hmm. it's okay. not impossible it doesn't mean that you cannot do it at all you know there are ways on how to do uh, for condos or high rise or, or secu high security kind of properties you cannot do it the same as an open house for a landed property you know so what you can do for condos for example you can do it but you can only invite probably invite only the, the residents of that property of that condos or you can do a private party a private showing kind of thing instead yeah. of doing an open house where everybody comes and register yeah. you will have a lot of problem with registering uh, clients you know one or two probably yes but if it comes 20 or 30 clients can register at the same unit probably that will uh, trigger a red flag for the security and end up no one will be uh, given permission to enter. So some of the ways that you can do for condos is that you can do a private party or private showing for yeah. that. You only invite I... people who you think that it's a uh, potential for that. You right. Know? them on certain days or probably maybe break it into two days so that it will not be uh, too many percent uh, clients coming in or you can also do an open house but only invites those residents which have access to that particular unit right. that yeah. I'm I'm reminded when you mentioned this. I remember a few months back when you were running you, you after your ignite session on open house. Uh, one of the students she decided to try to do an open house for one of for a condo, and then uh, they cannot do open house traditionally. So she just um, it be, it became basically a really awesome group viewing, and there was like twenty people, and she invite them all, and but it make the open house atmosphere with the music, you know, like have some snacks and then they all I mean it was quite exciting right so everyone come during the one or two hours and I, I think it was quite successful it was a, it, it's going to be a very good experience uh, for you as a rent doing that and also a very good exposure for you doing for that same same goes for those open house that you do on landed properties as well we need this one the challenge is going to be a bit uh, higher so it's going to be more a, a bit more adventurous uh, doing this you know this is will test test your capability of how to handle uh, issues, uh, problems when it comes to doing uh, handling with uh, the JMB or the management or even the securities themselves.
right, it's right, right, thing right. to do. And it may work or and also it may not work. So this is more on a trial and error. But like I yeah. said, any any open house, if you have proper planning for the past uh for the past week or past two weeks, hmm. it probably will go smooth. But if you don't okay. have plans for that, if you don't plan for this, uh, and you simply ad hoc basis like tomorrow you do a condo in a place you stay, probably it's not gonna work. Probably you're gonna face with a lot of challenges or problems uh during that day. Can you Just be to, yeah go ahead Anita. sorry just to add on because a friend of mine did for a condo so what she did was she did uh whatever marketing she did beforehand she had the closing date that means you must register by a particular date like one day before okay. and then she made the arrangements with the owner so whoever registered had to even give their car details like what car they're coming in and then they gave all the details to the owner where the owner went and submitted to the management and they didn't have a problem but they did it okay. just for one hour yeah okay so it's like a little party you know personal party it's a, it's a great idea a gathering i like that because when you talk about condo sometimes what you're most afraid of are that when there's complaints from other residents you know these are basically the main uh, red flag that will happen during that probably even if the management are okay but sometimes the next door neighbor uh, will complain when there's a lot of people uh, on that particular corridor uh, of that unit you know so when when one one person complains everything will have to stop you know sometimes right. it can happen it can happen it right. can happen yeah okay yeah someone asked if, if the open house are furnished do you, you also do open house that are empty like yeah. there's no furnitures yeah yeah most of them are empty yeah. so mostly empty we bring our tables and chairs with us oh okay yeah okay. So you'll bring that yourself cool cool okay um yeah, I want to. I did want to ask you guys, like, any advice you have for those agents who maybe want to try for the first time, you know, and they would like to use it specifically for lead generation as well. Because I think selling the house is one thing, but I think lead generation is, you know, actually even better. Yeah. Any advice you have for those who are uh, thinking to to really lead generate with an open house? I think the most important thing for open houses is the planning, and then also the after after uh, post open house where follow up after an open house is crucial for nurturing leads and uh, converting potential buyers because no matter how much leads uh, how many leads you you collect but if there's, uh, there's no conversion on the lead there's no point of doing everything uh, in collecting that right so first up uh, and then how to do that is that to uh, prompt communication follow up promptly preferably, preferably uh, within 24 to 48 hours because if you do okay. that like for example the open house is today and you follow up by next week they probably forgot who you are already <laughs> and you also probably forgot your clients who they are right and then uh, personalization to those who are venturing into this uh, who have never done this always personalize your 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 way of doing things and even your your follow-up messages kind of things you know and then uh, you also need you can also provide additional information uh, like what i mentioned just now earlier the transactive data around the area the neighborhood right 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 right, right. Your kind of thing so and good then, Always have a proper plan. You know, for example, you have uh, what what you're gonna do on the next steps, and then uh, always ask for feedback from the clients because this will basically uh, enhance uh, or increase your your uh, what what do you call it? Increase your your effectiveness of doing an open house like, because okay. your first open house probably it could not be as what you expected because this is the first. After the second one, you could. Sure. Have of, It'll be uh, a learning a learning curve. Yeah. On yeah. The one probably you don't need a uh, a lot of you basically yeah. you already know what to do things like that. And yeah. Also, thanks. Thanks for sharing all that. People communication channels kind of thing. Don't don't think that you can do it alone. You you cannot. You try to have at least one person to do right. It. Do bring some help with you. Okay, Anita, how about you? Anything to add on that? Um, I mean, I totally encourage everyone to try doing open house. I've done it like over fourteen years, and I'll never give up. And I think it is um, it's an amazing way. It's an amazing way to meet people. Amazing way to sell. I have sold a few houses via open house. Huh. It's just not one. So. Until you don't try it, you don't know. And even if you try it and it is not as good as you think, just try to see where you went wrong or yeah. what can be done to improve. Because sometimes somebody may plan an open house, but maybe they didn't do enough to reach out to the public. Mm -hmm. You know, so people may not even know about it. So, and maybe that weekend could be a busy weekend, a holiday weekend. So it's very important to even choose 
when you want to do it, don't do it like during a school holiday, you know, when people may not be around. So I think very important is to do it, to try it and not give up on it. Yeah. Right. Good. I was, uh, yeah, I like there was some things in the in the chat about need to do it consistently and uh, keep, keep doing, I guess, in the area, right? You would want to do multiple open houses in, in one year so people get to know you. Yeah. I want to just share again um, the one that you're doing because I think probably the best the best case for uh, anyone who wants to learn about open house, go yeah. to an open house and see what it looks like, right? Yeah. Please, I welcome I welcome everyone to attend this open house. Yeah, just you come for you know, just come and get to come and visit to view it and you know gain some experience. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You client. can all say so say again, Rosan. Yeah, invite your clients to the open house or anytime. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm inviting my clients. I'm inviting you all to bring your clients too. So yeah, please please do. Come, we all co agency together. Very nice. Okay, very very good. I love it. Okay, so um, we only don't have much time left. Actually, I will come. I'm going to go to announcements now and then we'll come back just to give a last word from Roslan and Anita. So let's look at our announcements. Okay, so Ignite, guys, my favorite class in the whole world. So today, uh, tomorrow is, we're, we're in module three right now. Tomorrow is session 11, follow up with leads. Um, I'm actually going to be there with Jasmine doing the training. <clears throat> so hope you guys can come for this session. It should be good. So this week we are finishing up the lead uh, follow-up parts. And then on Friday, actually, module four is already starting. And I want to really tell, okay, everyone on this call, uh, you better come up. Fifi is going to be training when the buyer. I don't want to stress her out too much. It's her first time doing it. But she's a really good trainer. And the topic is fantastic. I really recommend you come this Friday for Win the Buyer. It's so this is in, in the KW Malaysia Center uh, training center in Damansara Pradana at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Really come la. And then following the week after is Joanne Ong with the seller and uh, work with buyers and sellers, you know, negotiate offers. And there's so many good topics. So I really want to encourage you guys to take advantage of this great training. I don't know how many more times we're going to do it this year. I'm not sure we're going to run it again this year or not. We're still figuring out uh, if there's enough. Um, enough uh, people that want to sign up yeah so so make sure if you really want to come make sure you come this round uh make sure uh, in case there's not another one uh, i just want to put a bit of pressure on you okay <laughs> all right next slide yes okay this is really special kw cares is, kw malaysia cares is putting on a like not not mental health but mental wealth guys who wants to be rich in mind and rich for life rich my rich life um, a special session for all of you guys just just for like wellness right so maybe you have issues you get stressed out you know and and you have a lot of anxiety about being rejected or whatever whatever the issue is i'm sure we all everyone will struggle a bit you can come for this talk on 24th october sign up here um 2 30 to 4 30 all these different, I like this difficult buyers and sellers. I'm sure everyone experienced this, right? You can come for this talk. It's it's focused on how, how to help agents uh, to overcome all these kind of issues, right? So please come for this. All very, right. Yeah. Very young doctor will be presenting us. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, and it's free also. It's a free talk, guys. You should come. All right. So uh, yeah, just a reminder about the client touch points that are in circle. So you can download those and uh, use them for your clients. Okay, next one. All right. Yes, very. This is happening today in like 15 minutes. There's a Refill Puchong Onward event with Chan Ai Ching and Amiril Faisal. They're going to be speaking at uh, Refill Puchong. Really, I hope you guys are going to go for this. It's going to be awesome. I love both these speakers. All right. And also, upcoming sessions on Wednesday, 10 a.m. Understanding SBA with condition precedent. This is actually on 25th of October coming up. So please sign up for this, especially if you're in Puchong. And October 10th, Life Made Easier with KW Central. So that's tomorrow, 2 to 4 p.m. So that's a tech workshop. All right, next um, next one, right? So flagship market center, all their usual stuff happening. Tuesday, of course, is the KW Central day. There's a special thing here though, KW experience, right? This is on Thursday at 10 a.m. This is for, if you know any agents out there that would like to explore KW, meaning they're not in a KW agency and they would like to find out more about KW, uh, you can bring them to this. They can find out about the tech, the models, the trainings and all of that. It's like a one hour thing, very simple, no pressure. They could just find out what KW is about. All right, next one. So CDP courses, if you have not 
already uh, done your rent tag renewal in 2023, you better come. This is the final session. It's even another Chan I Ching again. She's fantastic. You should go for it. 15th of November, 2 to 6 p.m. That's in Ridfield Properties HQ. So please go for that. And then this week, uh, the power hour, of course. Sorry, just the last one. Uh, there's the two events on Thursday. So you come for that. The work, yeah. So anyway, you guys know the drill. <laughs> okay, next slide. Okay, this is the big one though. 18 October, um, there's going to be two power sessions. This is the state of the company. So everyone in flagship, you better show up for this ad. You better show up. You're going to be in big trouble. You don't come. La. So they have a very special speaker on industrial uh, market. You really, he's, he's really quite special. So you better come for this. And 1.30 yeah, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. There's two events happening on this page. <laughs> sorry, I'm getting confused. Anyways, please take a look and sign up for these events. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's all on 18th October. Two big events happening. So please come for that whole day long thing and do a lot of training. And of course, we have all our tech, our 360 scans, only 68 ringgit. And the next one, data labs, 49 ringgit a month. You need the data so that you can tell people. And of course, our WhatsApp tool, uh, KW Activate, 199 a month. All right. That's all our announcements. So just to come back, can I have a final word from Rosalind and Anita? Just short out. We only have like one minute. <laughs> uh, remember that mastering the art of turning uh, open houses into a solid lead generation opportunities is, is a, an ongoing process. Like for example, what Jonathan Quick uh, said, we have to do it constantly again and again, you know, like by combining uh, industry knowledge, uh, effective communication, and a commitment uh, to continuous development. Uh, basically, you can build a successful career in real estate and doing an open house is one of the uh, ways on how to do it. And hey. I wish all the best to those who have done uh, uh, and those who, are, who plan to do uh, open house. You know, I uh, wish you all the best. Invite us. Lah, to your invite place. us. There you go. Invite, invite Rosla and invite Anita. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Anita, how about you? Last word. Yeah, just do it. That, that's all I want to say. Just do it. Do it. Experience it and don't give up. <laughs> nice. Do it. Experience it. Don't give up. Fantastic. Let's all do open house, guys. Invite me also. Okay. I want to come and eat your snacks. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone, for coming for Winning Mondays. And we will see you next week. All right. Bye. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.